this video we're gonna talk about how to monitor progress for your tasks and for, for your whole projects or boxes in the big picture. This is something that apparently may seem like a very straightforward thing, but surprisingly there is multiple ways that this can be achieved and we see very often that one of these, day, uh, these ways works way better for our customers than the other. So picking the right way to track and monitor your progress is really important as this is something that you will be doing daily and reporting is really heavily reliant on that. This video is part of our effort to provide the best possible training around Jira, Confluence and whole Atlassian ecosystem. If you would like to support us, subscribe to the channel, like the video and feel free to leave any comment under the video if you have any further questions. Now let's take it away. Okay, so you can see that I'm in one of my boxes. So we will start by checking how can we track progress within the box on the tasks. Uh, later, we'll look at the boxes and how to track progress for the whole boxes. But for now, we are focusing on the single box and on the tasks. Uh, I'm in a Gantt module, but for now Gantt section won't be really necessary for us, so let's focus on what we have over here. So I added three columns, and these three columns will be basically representative of how can we track progress. So first column is a status column. So what we have over here, we have status of the tasks that are within my box. You can see that, that there is a hierarchy over here and tasks that are on the lowest level currently have uh, some information about status. So you may say that, okay, it gives me some indication what is happening to the task, uh, but it's not really precise, right? I may have here uh, to do in progress done, but if I'm at in progress, then it doesn't really show me whether I'm 50% or 100% or maybe 99. And you are right, this is not so precise, but very often we can see that the workflows that are behind, behind those issues are very complex and you have like uh, 20 or 30 statuses over there. Uh, this is not usually the case for the agile approaches, yet that happens. And in that case, this status is warm, way more granular and it actually gives you some indication about the progress. Uh, so this is, this is the status information, but you can see that on the higher level, on the parent level, in this case, there is Epic. I do not have information about the, about status of this Epic. Why is that? This is because for these columns, we can actually change what is the aggregation. If I would set it to none, I would just have information what is the status of the epic. But then if the epic would be collapsed, I would, wouldn't really see much here, right? I would just see the value of the, uh, of the status of the epic. But if we do some aggregation, so what I like is children statuses or children, sorry, children status categories or children status in percentage, we will see that on the parent level, we have three boxes now and it tells us how many issues are in status to do or status category to do, status category in progress and status category done. So now, even if Epic is collapsed, just by looking at this, we can get an indication what is really the progress, right? So we see that under this Epic, zero tasks are in status category to do, three of them are in progress, two of them are done. So basically we are, yeah, it, it looks like, okay, we are progressing. Unlike over here where two tasks are to do, nothing in progress, nothing done. So we didn't even start. Uh, so this works pretty nicely, uh, especially if you have this pretty granular, uh, pretty granular, granular and large workflow where you have really multiple statuses. One more thing that I mentioned is what is actually the difference between children's statuses and children's status ca categories, because this is important. In Jira, there are always only three status categories, to do, in progress, done. 
no matter how many statuses you have in your workflow, they are always mapped to these three values. So always, no matter how many statuses you have, uh, when selecting children status categories or children children status categories in percentage, you will see three boxes of uh, over here with numbers. If you would pick children statuses, if you would have workflow with 50 statuses, you would see 50 boxes over here, uh, which in my view is not a perfect solution. It might cloud the view actually it will be hard to read but you, if you have like four or five statuses maybe you want to go to children statuses so this approach it's very simple because it doesn't add any work on top of what you're uh, already doing uh, because normally statuses are are changed on the task level anyway and no additional work is needed and simply by just enabling column over here, you can get indication of what is the progress on each level. So we see on the task by status, on the parent of this task, just uh, as a sum of all the children. And even at the highest level on the project level, we see the information about everything that is below. The second way to track progress is by using time tracking. So as most of you know, Jira has this feature where you can estimate task, put on, for example, original estimate on the task. Uh, after that, you can log time and Jira tracks basically what was the estimate, how much time was logged and uh, how much time should be remaining, right? Of course, you can increase this remaining time if you see that original estimate was not, uh, was not precise but still you have this pretty good information about where you are at delivering the task. So for example, in this case, you can see that we logged one week, four days and some hours of work and two weeks of work are still remaining. Uh, so big picture can use this information. Uh, so what it does, it basically allows you to put the column time tracking over here. And then on each task level, you see how based on the time tracking, how far we are in delivering this task. So here, here we have 100%, it's done, here it's 40%. And similarly to what we've seen on the status, on the parent level, we can decide how it should behave. So if we set aggregation to none, of course, when on the parent, for example, on the epic level, we will just get information from the epic. So apparently here we logged no time on the epic. Nothing uh, is here 0% progress. But of course, downside of that kind of approach would be that if we collapse everything below the epic, to see just the epic, it seems like the progress is zero. That's why having the some aggregation is a good idea. And usually, some or some without parent. I think that in that case, some without parent works. Uh, so basically it sums the original estimates of the tasks that are below the parent, the time logged of the tasks below parent and shows it at the top on the parent level. So if I enable that, you can see that overall, it seems that based on all the lower level estimates and all the time tracked logged, uh, time logged below, uh, the epic progress is 55%. So the upsides of this, this is very precise estimate. So in the status, we could say that it wasn't the best because it just shows us the status category in this case, which is not very granular, not very precise. Here, this information is very precise. So if you are estimating and logging time, in my view, this is the way to go with tracking progress. This is the, the strong side of this approach. The side that very often uh, is a blocker and causes that this approach cannot be used is that it requires estimating and logging time. Very often we see that this is not something that we can, uh, we can ask employees to do because, for example, they are already uh, logging their time in some other t tool that is loosed, uh, used for, for uh, accounting, for example, and 
uh, management does not want to ask them to log the same information in the second tool that is Jira. This is basically a, a no-go usually and that case time tracking can be used but if only you are either already using time tracking or you are considering using time tracking and logging all the work on Jira issues uh, I find that this approach is the best one in my view and we are coming to the last option that we used pretty pretty widely uh, and that is using the custom field so you can have number custom field called for example progress and use it to track progress right so i have that kind of field over here i can say that this task has for example 50 percent progress this task has 20 percent progress or 30 percent progress this one 10 this one 15 and basically what it allows me to do and to have is very high flexibility so i'm putting the values here uh, i'm not limited by time tracking so i do not need to put estimates i do not need to lock time and it's it can be way more more granular than the statuses okay but you would, you you could say that hmm but where should we take these numbers from right because this is custom field there is actually several options that we use uh, so first option very often it's just manual so very often we see that that people just want to put uh, the progress according to to the people uh, want to put the progress as it is according to the people who are delivering the task uh, this might be not precise but it's good enough for a lot of cases but the strength of this approach is that it can also be automated so if you have something like for example script runner you could write a script that is setting this value so for example you could have a post functions on the workflow where you change the status from one to the other this field get updated then you will basically have uh, status based progress but you can also have other scripts and functions that increase the value of this progress so when you have this on the task level of course again you can customize and decide what should be displayed on the parent level now there is a downside to this so basically parent allows you to display for example average without parent so on the parent level we will see the average values from the uh, children tasks so yeah for example this is this is simple case we have pps 10 with uh, with two subtasks one is 10 second is 15 percent there is an average value that's it uh, of course strong side is that we have the aggregation we, we see what is happening on the higher level if on the lower level if if these are collapsed downside is that this is simple average it is not weight, uh, weighted so basically one task could be way larger than the other uh but still it will be treated the same it will be simple average how to go around that again uh, it's added work but flexibility is there using for example script runner you can have a script that uh, calculates on the parent level sets the progress from the children it will be a weighted progress and then we won't have over here aggregation we will have none but script will set our calculated progress and something that we are being asked very often is can uh, jira and big picture provide progress in the same way as it is calculated in microsoft project because very often organizations are used to that to that uh, approach and they just want to when moving to jira and big picture to uh, stick to the same logic of calculation and again it is possible with proper script uh, we can do it so that the parent or, or the, the uh, average value on the parent level is weighted and in microsoft project it is weighted based on length of the tasks so it is doable it requires a bit more work a bit more work but again if you want very specific logic uh, the custom field with some scripting around that can do the work.
Okay, one last thing about the progress inside the box. Uh, you may know that over here we have, we have an option to display the progress on the Gantt chart. Uh, and you can see that it is, for example, visible over here. 40% of work was done. We see the 30% of uh, bar that is darker than, than the rest. So we can see at the Gantt chart uh, where we are with progress. And it actually can be pretty useful when comparing to today. So if that would be today marker, this blue line that I have under my mouse, if that would be today marker, we could see whether we are falling behind. This is when uh, the today marker is in front of, of, of this darker area, or maybe we are delivering things faster than, than expected. This is if darker area would be further into the future than today. Uh, but for this to work, we need to make sure that our box is configured in field sync configuration in the progress so that we are using proper value because of course we can take progress from different fields as we discussed it could be custom field it could be time tracking okay so now let's quickly switch switch into the overview and talk about how we can track progress on whole box level and this one will be quick because in general it is done the same way as we've seen on the task level with some exceptions so let's quickly go and discuss about the str strong and weak sides of these approaches so we can look at the progress of our box this is our box that we've just seen a moment before so we can look at the st statuses of the tasks inside so we see that yeah uh, 57%, nearly 58 is in uh, status category to do, 70 or nearly uh, 18 in progress, 24 done. This gives us some indication about the progress. Again, not very granular, not very precise, but very often sufficient and it doesn't require additional work. We can do time tracking progress. I will repeat it, it's my favorite one if you're just estimating and logging time because it, it, it is most precise one and there is basically no downside uh, if those two criteria are met. So what I wanted to mention here is that we can also display over here the progress, of course progress uh, custom field taken from the tasks and here we have a slight problem with that approach because we need to select aggregation. Usually this is average, but then it averages values from all the tasks in the box. So this is something to keep in mind. Uh, if you want to use the custom fields, looking at the progress on the box level, it's not the best idea. Uh, if you really need that, if you really want to use custom fields, I'm afraid that you will have to go to the box and look at the top most element there the progress value will be uh, more precise that's it for this video i hope this was useful for you uh, as i mentioned if you have any questions leave them in the comments and see you in the next video